Mad cow disease is technically known as bovine spongiform encephalopathy, basically meaning a disease in cows that leaves their brain looking like a wet sponge. As you can imagine, your brain filled with tiny holes will leave you with all sorts of symptoms, things like personality changes, psychiatric problems, and lack of coordination. As the disease worsens, those symptoms progress to involuntary jerking movements, confusion, and memory problems progressing to severe mental impairment. The victim then loses the ability to move or speak altogether. Once enough holes are present within the brain, the victim dies. The grim outlook for those diagnosed can owe it all to a type of protein called a prion. Proteins in the body start out with a primary amino acid sequence. They then fold into secondary shapes, normally giving it a structure known as an alpha helix. This allows them to fulfill whatever function the body needs. When an animal or human is born with an abnormal gene called a condon 129, it causes those proteins to fold into a structure called a beta sheet instead of its normal alpha helix. These malformed proteins are known as prions. Prions clump together into fibers called amyloids. Amyloids bind together on the surface of brain arteries and cells. The result is death to those cells. Prions also act like the Borg from Star Trek. They force proteins around them with similar amino acid sequences to take on their shape. All of these amyloids spread throughout the infected central nervous system, causing the numerous pockets of dead cells that lead to the tiny holes in your brain and spinal cord. No one knows for sure where mad cow disease came from, but the prevailing theory is that it came from Scrapey, the sheep version of the disease. Prior to mad cow's outbreak, it was common to make dietary supplements for cattle from the meat and bones of sheep and other cows. The timing also coincided with changes in the way this sheep-cow mix was processed. Instead of liquefying the carcasses of sheep and cows into a proteinaceous slurry, they instead fed that meat through rendering equipment. It was thought this resulted in uneven heating of the slurry. When the UK banned this practice in 1987, five years later there was a marked downturn in the number of new mad cow cases, five years being the average intraspecies incubation period of mad cow. All told, there have been approximately 184,500 confirmed cases of mad cow disease in the UK. Only four known cases have ever been confirmed in the United States. The number of infected peaked in 1993, with around 1,000 new cases found each week. Due to the strict regulations set in the process and handling of cattle, new cases have drastically been reduced to just 11 total in all of 2010. While creutzfeldt jakob disease affects approximately one in every one million people, the variant form that comes from mad cow disease is even rarer. Only 153 people worldwide have ever been diagnosed with it. Since the total number of mad cow cases is becoming increasingly scarce, it's sure to follow that variant creutzfeldt jakob disease will also become a problem of the past. So eat your beef, secure in the knowledge it didn't come from mad cows, although I'm sure they were still a bit upset about being eaten, despite their happy demeanor.